Hi everybody, Mr. E from Art with Mr. E, and I am bringing to you part two of our circle weaving videos. Now, if you are here and haven't watched part one, you might want to stop this video and go watch part one first, because I think that this will make a lot more sense if you do. All right, so today's video, I want to talk to you about some troubleshooting and some other tips that you might want to use while weaving. Now, if you are really struggling still to get things warped, to get the string going, go back and watch video one. Go to artwithmr.e.com. I have a post up that has progress pictures of how to do this and a written explanation. So hopefully, if you can do that, that that will help you through to get to a point where you feel confident in weaving. All right, so today's tips. One of the things, and I believe I mentioned it yesterday, was that it's a good idea to put a piece of tape at the beginning string and then at the end string. You don't need a lot of tape. Just tape it where the string comes through the cuts that you made. You don't need a long piece. And if you wanna cut off the extra string on the back, you can, not this part, but like this part right here, the little tail. You can cut the extra tail off, that's not a problem. But by securing that string, you'll keep your warp strings tighter because if you don't tape that down while you're weaving, you can kind of loosen them and you don't want them to come out because that could really throw your weaving off. One of the other tips is the length of string that you're using. Now, you don't want to use an itty bitty piece of yarn. You don't want to use a piece of yarn like this big because like what are you going to do with that not a whole lot but you also don't want to go to the opposite extreme and have too much yarn a good rule of thumb is get a wingspan that's what i tell my students now what i consider a wingspan is going from the tip of one finger to the tip of the other finger on your other arm and holding your arms out like a big letter t like your body is a big letter t so have the yarn go from one hand to the other hand with your arms completely stretched out like a giant letter T. And that is a good workable amount of yarn. If you have too much yarn, it gets in the way, easily tangled. Yeah, it's just not good. And then if you have too small, especially as your circle starts getting bigger, you're going to notice that you go through yarn a lot quicker. So if you get it too small, then you're just going to be constantly cutting more yarn and tying more knots. And yeah, you don't want to do that either. So a wingspan is a pretty good length. It could be a little bit shorter than that, but you don't want it much shorter than that. All right. Okay. One of the other things that I want to talk to you about today is what do you do when you get to the end of your string? All right. Now, one thing you can do if you're really, 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 really bad at tying knots, well, practice and you'll get better. But if you're just really frustrated at tying knots, what you can do is weave with your yarn until you can weave no more, and then just lift it up and tuck the end string underneath. And it disappears as if it's not there. Now this is an option. This is if you get frustrated with tying knots, do this. I don't necessarily think it's the best option, because as you're weaving your next string, you could accidentally start pulling out the end of your last string, and it's gonna cause your weaving to look a little bumpy, lumpy, and weird. So what I recommend is when you get close to the end, now you need enough slack to tie your knot, but when you get close to the end, take your yarn, with your new piece, put it side by side, wrap it around your finger, little bunny ears, go around the circle and up through the hole. Grab the ears and pull. Now you don't want big long ears because big long ears, well, they don't do any good. So I'm gonna trim off the extra that I have you don't want to cut it all the way to the knot because then it'll come undone. All right. And then you just keep weaving 
like you have been. So where did I leave off? I was under. So remember, this is an AB pattern. So I went under here. So then I'll go over, under, over, under. And I just keep weaving and then pull. So I don't want to go all the way around. Go about halfway or so and then pull your string. And then, so I went under this one. So over, under, over, under, over, under. Now some people when they weave, they will use like a plastic needle or something. You could use a popsicle stick and tape the end of your yarn to the popsicle stick and go over, under, over, under if that's easier for you. I find it just as easy to use my hands, but it's up to you, whatever works best. All right. Uh-oh. I see a problem. I spy an issue. Do you see how these strings both of these strings go under. It goes under, and then that next one goes under. You know what that means, don't you? That means I double jumped. Somewhere while I was weaving, I went over, over, or I went under, under. And it throws off my weaving. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to pull this back and find where I made my mistake. And let's see, where did I make the boo-boo? Oh, there it is. Do you see? I went over, over. We don't want to go over, over. This is an A, B pattern. A, B, A, B. Over, under, over, under, over, under. You don't want to go over, over, or under, under. It'll throw you off. So you just take it out and then fix your mistake. Was that hard? Absolutely not. Super duper easy. You just have to really pay attention to what you're doing. And if you see that something is off, take a couple minutes and investigate and find out where your mistake is. We are not perfect. <laughs> we make mistakes all the time. But a diligent, good artist is always paying attention and finding if they can fix any mistakes that might arise. And that was an easy mistake to fix for sure. Now, you might notice that as I go, I'm not pulling hard on my string. If you pull hard, what's going to happen is the circle is going to bunch up and it's going to start getting poofy and thick. You don't want a poofy, thick circle. Your circle should be nice and thin. Do you see how thin that is? If it's looking all chubby and puffy, that means you're pulling way too tight. And that really doesn't do anything for our weaving. It just wastes yarn. So don't, when you go to pull your string through, just give it a tiny little tug like that. Don't yank hard because if you yank hard, it's going to bunch everything up and it's not going to look very good. All right. Now on my weaving, I have probably two inches more that I can weave. I'll probably finish about right here because if I go much farther than that, it's going to be really hard for me to weave underneath the, this top part of my loom. All right. So I've probably got two inches, maybe two and a half inches left of weaving to do. Well then what am I going to do with the rest of my plate? What I have my students do, is once they finished weaving or feel like they are at a stopping point with their weaving, they will take a pencil and draw a design on the space that is left. 
and they'll go right underneath the edge of their weaving so that you can't see any transition spot. It just looks all like one piece. There's no like little white halo around it or cardboard color halo. Then after they draw their design, they usually do a pattern of some sorts. Then they'll take markers and they'll color it using colors that they used in their weaving. It makes it look like one thoughtful, coordinated piece. Now, if you want to do a contrasting type colors with the marker, that's fine. Contrasting means different. So if you want to use colors that are very different from your weaving, you can do that. This is your work of art. That's your decision. I'm just saying, in my classroom, what I usually do is have the kids use colors that are similar to their yarn. It just makes it look very finished. Like it looks like a finished work of art when you have that color transition into the marker. It's sometimes it's hard to see where the yarn stops and the marker starts because of how well they've done their coloring. But that's up to you. So that's one way to finish it and then you would just hang it up on the wall like that. It looks super cool. So I hope that some of these tips and tricks will help you as you finish off your weaving. I hope you've had fun and if you've had any if you have any questions, please ask me on my blog or on any places that you've seen this post and I would be really happy to help you figure out what you need to do to make this an amazing work of art. Happy weaving everybody. Bye-bye now.